Jonathan Lee Riches investigates reporting from outside the Moscow home. This home here, we've been seeing this image of this home since November 13th, 2022, when four college students were brutally stabbed inside that home. During the early morning hours, November 13th, 2022, between the hours of 3 and 4 a.m., according to the county coroner, and police have made no arrests. They haven't publicly identified any suspects. They haven't recovered the murder weapon, which is assuming a knife. And they are looking for a white Hyundai Elantra model 2011-2013. They believe, police believe, that the individual is driving or individual driving this Elantra has critical information that could help solve this case. So, let's talk. Let's talk. I've been on the scene now, scoping out the area, mapping out possible escape routes, talking to locals, right? So, I've been speaking to locals off the record, right? I've been establishing contacts and relationships with local people that kind of have an understanding of this area very grateful for that very grateful anyone else that wants to speak you can send me an email i will leave that email i will leave my email in the description and the comments of this video please contact me so let's talk about information that i learned since being here right so about a mile away to the east of here there's a exxon mobile station it's on uh, the corner of Highway 8 and um, Steiner, Steiner and Highway 8. And the manager there recently handed over footage to authorities. They captured a white vehicle at 3.45 a.m. coming from the east going west into Moscow, right? And then it turned on this Steiner who knows where it went from there? Also, a block from here on Linda, on the top of the hill there, you can. there's an apartment complex and it overlooks Taylor, which is the road right outside here that comes to this home. And that individual there, the landlord, got footage of a white car going past at between 2.45 and 3.15 a.m. So you got two separate surveillance people saying that they got this white car but the person on linda a block away said 250 or 245 to 315 car going this way to the house but didn't see the footage or any or didn't see the car coming back that way um the numbers don't make sense here the numbers don't make sense here regarding a block away or the gas station surveillance because the gas station surveillance at 345 cars coming into moscow not leaving moscow so are they to the same vehicle both traveling east to west that does not make sense to me so i'm thinking one of them is a false lead right or a car that might not be the right one but which one is the correct one maybe both of them are incorrect Maybe both of them are incorrect. I mean, the footage that we've seen from the Exxon Mobil station that looks like a white Hyundai Elantra, the one on Linda Lane that's been reported one block away, they have not released that footage. So we can't tell if that is the same vehicle. Waiting for police to provide clarity on that. Now, talking to the locals, they, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be honest. A lot of the locals around here are saying, what about Hunter? Hunter Chapin, Ethan's brother. And they present some interesting questions when it comes to Hunter, right? They're saying, you know, Hunter is Ethan's twin brother. I guess they're triplets. Ethan also has, and Ethan was one of the victims, has a sister too. Triplets, right? His brother looks identical. His brother Hunter is a Sigma Chi fraternity member along with Ethan. So they're both in the same fraternity. It is a fact that Ethan and Hunter were together on the 12th, the evening of the 12th. And they were both with Hunter's sister, Ethan and Hunter's sister. And they were at some 
uh, Betty Ball. Betty Ball. Betty Ball. They posted pictures. They were at some sort of... It was called the Betty Ball. And I made a video about that. So they were, in fact, Hunter was with Ethan into the 12th. It is also being reported and shared that when the next day, when the bodies were found, somebody out here, some neighbor or someone or either the surviving roommates, Bethany and Dylan, that stayed down there at that bottom of the home there, somehow got a hold of Hunter and Hunter was here at this house before authorities were called. He was here. I thought that's interesting too. So where was Hunter that night? Where was Hunter that night in reference to an alibi? And does anyone know out there where Hunter stays? Because there is some speculation going that Hunter was inside this home sometime during that night. Don't know if it's true or not. Again, these are these are what locals are saying to me, and I'm just relating it to you guys, right? Hunter, you know, it makes me think a lot of things about DNA, right? Since Hunter and Ethan are the, you know, triplets, twins, those two are twins, triplets with the sister, you know, their DNA would pretty much be the same. And Hunter is known... I'm told to be in this house. He's been in this house before. So his DNA is going to be there, by the way. And the DNA could be similar to Ethan's. But where was Hunter that night? Another thing they presented to me was they said news reports. And I, I, I looked into this also. I was told that, you know, Kaylee's father, Kaylee Steve Gunsolfs, is, you know, very outspoken in speaking about this case, right? And he stated on the record, I actually looked and I saw a report too. He said, according to Kaylee's father, he said that Maddie's family and Zana's family are on board with him. But Ethan's family is not on board at that time. And that was like a report from last week. So Ethan's family is not on the same page as Steve Gunsolf's. Why? Why? That's a great question. That's a great question to ask. What is Ethan's family role and are they on board with the other families we've only heard from ethan's family twice one mother gave a press conference outside um of a i don't know it was a business but hunter was there people were saying oh his arms were folded in that video his arms were folded his arms were folded so yeah i don't know anything about that i'm just sharing what other people are sharing with me and ethan's fat mother and father spoke to a, a reporter and said they were something about a family home up in northern Idaho. But where was Hunter? And I, I, I do want to ask everyone. I'm not saying Hunter did this or involved or anything like that. But he's with Ethan the night before. And he's at the crime scene here before police come. You know, at, Hunter must know something. And he's part of the fraternity. Now moving forward, it'll be interesting to see if Hunter comes back to this university and Ethan's sister, but Hunter in particular, and if he stays a Sigma Chi fraternity member, if he stays as Sigma Chi, do you think that? What's your thoughts on that? But I am out here. I just wanted to share that information. Locals are saying, you know, look at Hunter. Look at Hunter as far as not necessarily him being involved, but he might know somebody or where was his whereabouts. The... um you know, that during that night, during the night, he's with Ethan before, you know, that's a, they're brothers. And I guess if Sigma Chi had a party, you would think Hunter would be at that party too. Was Hunter at that party, Sigma Chi party? Did Hunter work his way back to this house? You know, being out here and being on the field, I can't, you know, the, the likelihood of a, this house being a random target attack is to me, slim to none. You know, it seems like someone had to be familiar with this this home. Dog was found locked in a room. You know, it just shows that somebody. I mean, you got a you had a bunch of cars out here. You had a bunch of cars out here, and you know, just a random person coming. Keep in mind too these surveillance videos, right? If the neighbor next door on Linda Lane saying that they seen a car come this way, a white car between two forty five and three fifteen. You know, it's not like the killer 
was sitting here for a while and went in and killed. Maybe, I mean, what's the likelihood of a killer coming to the scene right away and then going right in and killing right away and then leaving right away? Or, you know, within that hour frame? I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem right. And then, but, but remember that Kaylee and Madison were calling Jack Decor numerous times as late as 2.51, 2.52 a.m. That's kind of going with the time with the next door going over there seeing the surveillance of this car. Now, I don't even know if that car is related or not, like I said. So these are some of the key things I picked up. And then also that neighbor said they didn't see the car go back that way. So I'm wondering if the car right out here, Linda goes out, Walenta goes out all the way to Sunnyside, down to Conestoga, down to Palouse and out. You can then go Washington State side to Palouse, turns into Sand Road, or you can go to Palouse to Main Street, but there's surveillance camera there. There's a trailer park right there. James Curtis Leonard lives at that trailer park, by the way. That's that guy that did all that craziness with his wife in the manslaughter case I talked about. But I'm out here trying to pin this, put the pieces together. You know, put it together, painting a picture, giving you guys insight. Look at all my videos. I've been driving around the area, trying to figure this thing out, trying to crack the code. But I think Ethan, you know, Will Ethan, or not Ethan, Hunter. Will Hunter, where's Hunter? I like, I like using that term, where's Hunter? Where is he? Like, is he going to speak up? Is he going to beg the public for, you know, to find the killer of his twin brother or triplet brother? He hasn't spoken. He hasn't spoken. And, you know, if I lost a brother or sister, I would speak. What would you do? If you lost a brother or sister that was, a, a you know, a victim of a crime would, and, and it was unsolved, would you be out there trying to find out who did that? So I wanted to share that information, you know. And then they also said, well, maybe the white car is not necessarily involved, but just the witness or just came here for some reason. The police need to corroborate who this driver is to find out why they were here, not necessarily being here for the killer. So... That's my report. Let me know what you think. It's cold out here in Moscow. You've got uh, authorities there. That's uh, Idaho State Trooper patrolling the home. Don't see much out here. Let me spin the camera around. Don't see much out here right now. Media seems like they went home. I'm the only one out here. I'm the only one out here. So if you want to go to coverage out here, you want good analysis, It's I'll, I'll tell you, covering this case for the first couple weeks before I came out here, you know, is one thing and you get an idea, but you know, you know, you see the maps and you see the Google images and what, but you got to come here to see for yourself. And then it puts it into a whole different perspective. And I truly doubt that a serial killer or someone just basically came into this home and, 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 and did this. I, I had to be somebody close or someone that has been in that house before. That's just my opinion. Could be wrong. Hopefully authorities have their eyes on somebody and waiting for some evidence. They don't have the murder weapon. And it, I think it's going to be difficult to solve this case without the murder weapon. What's your thoughts on that? Do you think they can convict somebody if they don't find the murder weapon? And remember, DNA. DNA. Even if they have other people's DNA that are in this house. This was a party house. There was pictures. I've seen at least 50 different images of people inside this home, at least 50 different people in this home. A defense attorney would say, yeah, my client was inside the home. My client visited a home. It's not like it's a home where they don't have people coming in and they find somebody's DNA. Of course, there's gonna be lots of people's DNA in this home. There's gonna be lots of people's bodily fluids inside that home. When I say bodily fluids, yeah, there probably was stuff going on in these beds, you know, and different people visiting and stuff like that. I'm just saying, college kids, you know what I mean? college kids. So yeah, there's going to be other people's DNA in this house. So that alone is not going to be able to convict somebody when you admit you've been in that house. So you're going to need more things. You're going to need more things. Check out my other videos. I'm on this case. Did anything I'd say make sense? I hope it did. Follow me. I'll be posting more soon. Stay tuned. Praying for the victims, praying for the victims' families, praying for this community. They need to solve this case. Everyone be safe. God bless. We'll talk soon.